Day five of the Russian invasion continues to spark global opposition as protesters gathered in New York City and across the world in solidarity with Ukraine, including in Russia, where more than 3,000 protesters were detained. Half a million Ukrainians have left the country, according to the UN Refuge Agency, as others are returning to their homeland to take up arms against Russian invaders. The resistance continues as Ukraine and Russia met at the Belarusian border for the first direct talks today. The U.S. Treasury Department announcing new sanctions targeting the Russian central bank and state investment funds in the latest hard-hitting retaliation for the invasion of Ukraine. According to the Associated Press, the Biden administration estimated that the move could impact hundreds of billions of dollars of Russia funding. New Jersey has joined in part of the global effort to isolate Russia economically. The New Jersey Assembly, in response to the unprovoked and aggressive Russian invasion of Ukraine in violation of the country's independence and sovereignty, voted unanimously 75 to 0, passing a bipartisan concurrent resolution to stand in solidarity with the people and government of Ukraine. Still, Ukrainian residents here feel helpless as they watch from afar, many fearful for their families and friends still in Ukraine, doing anything they can to aid the resistance. Joanna Gagas reports. The anguish for Ukrainians here in New Jersey has only worsened as Russia's attacks on the nation continued throughout the weekend and today. My mom and my two sisters, they're 13 and 14, are trying to get out right now. They're trying to cross Polish border. They're literally crossing border with nothing, only their paperwork. Jersey City's Maria Soroka is overcome with emotion thinking about her dad in Kyiv. He's 58 and he can't leave the country because only because they're drafting people 18 to 60. But I know that he wouldn't leave the country even if he could. They are fighting, they're fighters. But as their anguish grows, so too does their resolve. Stand strong, stand strong. We are fighting here as the Ukrainian American community to make sure that they are supported on all parts. Every day we get a press release of the action points that the ambassador of Ukraine, Oksana Markarova, is asking us to disseminate. We're getting humanitarian help, we're getting medical help. That's very much needed right now, okay? We're helping with whatever possible equipment we can get. We have a chain that's been created and it's just nonstop. The supplies are going nonstop. That's how our army is able to stand this strong, because we are supporting them. Soroka and Condon are with Ukrainian Jersey City. They're one of countless Ukrainian organizations around the state that have sprung into action to send direct support to Ukraine. We're working with a NGO in Ukraine that has secured various different uh, storage facilities throughout the country that is procuring medical supplies, pharmaceutical supplies, um, food, uh, some clothing, some of the thermal blankets that are needed. And they are then providing it to the front lines as well as hospitals that are treating uh, the wounded or refugees, IDPs. IDPs are individuals who fled their homes but still remain in their country. Many are hiding in churches, using them as bomb shelters or because they've already lost their homes to bombs. South Brook's Ukrainian Orthodox Church is actively supporting IDPs still in Ukraine. As of this morning, we collected uh, a quarter million uh, of uh, financial aid that will be distributed to the refugees and people in need in eastern part of Ukraine. In fact, I was personally able to transfer churches funds to to the various religious leaders in Ukraine that are caring for the uh, people that were left without homes uh, on the streets uh, living in, this, in a town like Mariupol, eastern Ukraine, in Donbass region. Archbishop Zelensky said that some church leaders, including the archbishop from the Donbass region, are actually targets for Russian attacks right now. He sent me a picture of his home where he lived. It's level. There is nothing left. And in that bombing, his grandmother, who is 76 years of age, was killed. So far, the Ukrainian government has reported 350 civilian casualties, including 14 children. Ukrainian and Russian delegates met in Belarus today, although there's not much hope amongst Ukrainians here that those talks will have a positive outcome, especially as Belarus looks poised to join the Russian effort that's met with more resistance than Putin likely planned. He clearly miscalculated on the resistance that he was going to be facing, and you can see that by the type of military units that he had sent in. Uh, they have limited supply lines, they're spread apart, and they have no air cover. Uh, however, you're seeing mobilization of the 
larger Russian military force, and you're also seeing the mobilization of the Belarusian force. So they're really preparing to hit Kyiv and to their intention is to take over. But folks on the ground here are asking for support. Print a little flag, place ribbons, show support. This makes us stronger. Ukraine in Jersey City is organizing a rally tomorrow that will march from Jersey City to Hoboken during the day. They're asking anyone who wants to get involved to follow their Facebook page, Ukraine in Jersey City, where you can find more information. In Jersey City, I'm Joanna Gagas, NJ Spotlight News.